Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, April 1st, 1st 2024, regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, I'm Brad Town, and to my left is Flo Smith. Far left is Joe Staub. To my right is Tor Nelson, who's also acting town administrator. Carolyn and Weasel, and with us tonight is Callie Streeter, our town treasurer. And uh, the year additions or changes to the agenda tour? Uh, none. And uh, public comment? Seeing none or hearing none. Public hearing acceptance of uh, Dodge Farm Road as a town highway. I move to open the public hearing. Near a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Come on in. Come on in. Make yourselves welcome. Comfortable. Yeah. Uh, earlier today at five o'clock, we met at uh, Dodge Farm Road for a site inspection. Um, the road appears to be in good shape. Tim, any comments? No, not really. Just the, what we discussed about that we want to make, might want to just make sure that we got some clarification on that. We've got the right to maintain that soil or soil all the way out to the retention pond. And then I think everything else, there's going to be a little bit of cleanup from those ruts and stuff. And like I said, I kind of want to address that one culvert up in the hill a little bit more was making a little bit more of a yep. retention pond there so it can't jump out and wash it out there and now it's just hand shoveled out so yeah well so that good job uh, going back to that ditch and the retention pond um i think we probably need to have a fairly good understanding on how that was designed i don't necessarily think right now um it doesn't drain directly to I think it has a little, it's it shallow, you know, it's fairly shallow oh, yeah. right know, there. But 15 years from now, when it needs right. to be maintained, I just want to make sure that, you know, whoever is, has, we don't have to get into a battle. About getting out there and about maintaining. Getting out there and maintaining it. Nor do we want it to get in there and dig it down so it runs straight to yeah. the retention you know pond. I mean? So just an understanding yeah. of how, it, how it's supposed they to be. They must have, I'm sure somebody has, like Joe said, the design of the grade work for it, whether it's supposed to be an inch of travel or you know, get an inch of pitch through there or whatever it is. But like, I just want to make sure that we're set up for the duration that we have the right to maintain that. Yeah, the retention pond. Who has the uh, plans for that for the roadway? Um, well, we we have some plans. We personally have some plans, uh, but uh, I have not seen plans for the the roadway or the uh, or the uh, drainage system. Uh, it's possible that uh, Larry Flourish would have those plans. Uh, who who was the who was the design engineer for that? Oh, it was mentioned at the. It was mentioned at the site visit. Um, oh, let's see. Would yeah, we have a copy that. as part of the subdivision? We should have. I would some. And this, it has must have had to go through Act Two Fifty, right? Would that go through Act Two Fifty or no? That development. I think that might have been the Act Two Fifty. Act Two Fifty's been around a while. Yeah, been, Act Two Fifty started back. It's been 50 uh, years, I think. Yeah. 60-something or yeah. 70s. Somebody's got to have a copy of that. Yeah. At the... I assume it's in the town property records under the Dodge Farm Road. Um, Dodge Farm. Yeah. Well, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the property records, but it might be the zoning. It might be in the zoning file if Tom has such a file. You could check with Tom. Yeah. Uh, any yet, yeah, no, uh, Joe? And to continue on that ditch, um, I do believe that the water line coming down the hill goes underneath that ditch line, and, and knowing what that is and everything, and we just don't dig deep ditches. Be, be, be important to know. 
<laughs> you don't want to hit the water line. <laughs> you don't want to take any of the insulating value you know, oh. of, of the soil above. You yeah. Know, oh, gotcha. Any other comments on this? Mr. Sear, I see you're online. Do you want to add anything in? He was kind of one of the original yeah. pictures on this. I don't see at least muted. Okay. Yep, Just got go. a new computer here, breaking it in tonight. It's not good. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening, Ray. Good evening. How are you folks? Good. Good. Um, yeah, I, I, I do believe all that uh, material that you're looking for is uh, on file with the town. I have, you know, eight and a half by 11 copies of it, something that, you know, difficult to read, but I'm, I'm quite positive all that stuff was filed. Um, the ditch going out to the uh, retention pond yeah, I, that, I'm sure that that we don't really care if you want to open it up and clean it out whenever you want. I, it would be a, a, a good thing for us. Um, I did open up that culvert that was purposely blocked. Um, for some reason, environmental wanted that blocked. Uh, so I, I did open it. I'm the culprit. <laughs> uh, did we find I, out why they wanted us? No, I, I, you know, I, I can't understand why because, uh, you know, moving that water over to that side of the road would end up in that retention retention pond. I, I just, I can't. I, There's I no, no like. Yeah, I have no reason to save any environmental species. Are they by not letting? Uh, uh, this seems odd that they would want it blocked. I don't know. I just, I, I just think it's probably not good to. We call them up and ask them. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I don't know how the uh, your inspection came out. I guess I, I guess it's been okay. Um, hopefully yeah. you, you folks accept that. Uh, at least we're counting on it. <laughs> Anything else on the uh, Dodge Farm Road? Entertain a motion. I uh, move to close the hearing. Second. Yay. Oh. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Um, okay. Possible decision on acceptance of Dodge Farm Road as a town highway and acceptance of findings. So I guess this will be actually. Two parts. Uh, you know, the first is do we want to, are you ready to accept Dodge Farm Road as a town highway? Uh, that'd be the first decision. And then the second decision is we need to issue a um, notice of findings of our of the process and our uh, deliberations and everything. Um, and we have to do that within 60 days of the public hearing. So we don't have to do that part tonight. Um, but I do recommend we accept the road as a town highway and um, make that motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? So I just want to clarify, we're going to first, I mean, I'm used to the DRB where we have conditions. So I don't know if that's a similar thing, but we want to make sure that there, that the deed, that there's access to that land formally, because if he sells the house, we want to still make sure we have access. I think that's a really good point. So there should be an easement. And I I think the town should find out about why they closed the call, why they, I think it's kind of a responsibility to find out why they wanted that shut, because we don't want to be liable for something. Those are, that's my opinion. Well. When you look at it, Carla, we didn't really open it up. <laughs> no, no, but I, down the road, if there's a reason for it and we are not in compliance, I mean, I guess we could always close it up again, but yeah. I mean, I'm not as concerned about that as the land and that, we have access because if somebody else buys the land and decides they don't want us on the, want the town on the property, that could be a problem. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, and closing it off like they did, 
is, is not right. It's mm -hmm. removal of the culvert, if that was a problem. Yeah. And, and that wasn't, I guess, requested to have it removed. Well, you know, and yeah. that would be. Yeah. Okay. I'm, not I'm, us. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a, a meets and bounds. Excuse me. I'm sorry. We do have a you know when that culvert was closed off, or was it has it been that way forever? Well, I, I think uh, after Larry uh, bought in, so he was a second owner. It happened at 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 that time. Uh, I think they changed their mind after it was allowed open the first time. I'm just guessing. I. I it's all kind of a conjecture that we've heard. Kind of um, back to the uh, the town highway portion, we do have a meets and bounds description uh, for a 50 foot right of way up through there. I, it may even be 60, I, um, but I'm sure we can uh, provide that. Yeah, this is down uh, to access. Can you explain? Down behind the mailbox is right where that ditch runs out to the retention pond along Scott Hill. Is what that's is what's that's the land we're talking about, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I mean, can't we just uh include that? Uh, if you decide to take that town highway on to include that as a condition, I'm sure um, everybody on the it's, hill would it's a single agree. private landowner, yeah. I mean, the land the current landowner agreed to that, so I think I don't think it's an issue. I just want to make sure that that's understood that we're going to have to have that i think and well you should have it in uh, perpetuity because right on the deed yeah. exactly and he he was okay with it so i don't think it's a problem because well, he won't you want to have because he currently yeah. owns it so <laughs> well, if he's willing to put that on his deed i think we're fine yeah if it's not already there yeah i think you'll find it's already there okay well that would be good but if not you know we, we just want that to happen mm -hmm. well uh, um so basically, we're at a point to where we're ready to accept the road, but we have one little stumbling block. Yeah. So any chance of having the uh, motion uh, conditional yeah. on the, uh, being uh, straightened out uh, for positive findings? Well, I'll move that we accept. Can I amend the motion? No. Yeah, you can amend it now. Okay. To um, ex accept the road pending... Um... The condition that we have access through a deed easement to the to maintain that lot swale, swale or perhaps just review of the planning. What do you mean? Just review of the of, uh, of the design work because it may already be in there. Yeah. Well, we can review the. I mean, the the landowner, or we can look at the deed. Yes, yeah. just to confirm that we have perpetual access to maintain that swap. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay, all those in favor. Any other comments? Yes. Are we going to put speed limit signs on it? That's a separate issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was just curious because it's Darty has a stop sign, like we said, and then I was just wondering because it's such a short road, dead end road. I mean, like we had a conversation with all the other ones. There is, I believe there's a speed limit there now. Yeah. Yes. And, but that's going to be part of the traffic ordinance, exactly. which is not compliance. So right. One. That's why we're updating the traffic ordinance. I uh, wanted to do it at the next meeting, but with the additional items we found, it won't be, but um, it'll be some point later. But uh, putting in the stop sign and the stop speed limit sign. sign there. Right. But it's not in our ordinance. Yeah. So put both of those in our ordinance and make both of those legal. Excuse me. Yeah, Joe. Well, just to go back to the first motion, which was seconded, and then to, I think that needs to fail if you're going to do a second motion. Or no, she, I or she amended. She, she amended. So we, so we got so we got a vote on the amendment. Okay. Then revote, uh, well, not revote, but then vote okay. on the original motion as I'm amended, good. assuming Thank that the amendment passes. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I didn't realize that. Okay, good to her. And, and, and now you know why Paul Gillies wants out. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Amendment passes. 
Now we vote on, assuming we're ready to vote on it, we vote on the original motion as amended now. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. There you go. <laughs> I need to thank you folks. Uh, uh, I know it's been a, a long process. It has for us also. I also want to uh, thank Tour especially because he has really been helpful. He, he's, a, he's a great guy. Yeah. Lucky, Appreciate lucky working with you on this, right? I wish we could keep him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, folks. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ray. You. Um, so the other issue is the, uh, I've included a draft of the findings um, in your packet. But uh, so take a look at that. Like I said, we don't have to do this one tonight. Um, and it sounds like there may be some proposed additions uh, that you want in there. Okay. You only want to put something about the access. Correct. Yeah, that's my mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> so I will move to table the findings until the next meeting. Here a second. Second. All those in are any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Uh, AOT annual certifications. So these are documents. Uh, there's two of them in your packet. Uh, these are annual certifications we have to make every year uh, to the state to be eligible for the um, road funding. Uh, first one is that we, our standards meet the state uh, town and road and bridge standards. And the second one is our annual financial plan uh, that we raise at least $300 per mile of class, or in our case, class two and three town highways, which we far exceed that. So I will make the motion to approve both the certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards and the annual financial plan for town highways. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So do we want this to say 2014? Oh, that's, yes. oh, okay. Wait, wait. okay, I didn't read right close to uh, capital improvement and contract approval. Uh, here again, this is in your packet. Uh, last meeting, we yeah. awarded a the contract for the capital improvement plan to Stone Shore Municipal Consulting. Uh, and we have received the uh, contract from them and uh, looking to sign it. Um, they will be meeting with us at our April, excuse me, 15th meeting uh, for the kickoff on this project, um, which is the first step in, the, uh, in this process. So I move that we sign the consulting services agreement with uh, Stone Shore Municipal Consulting and authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board. Here a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 This is great. Right. Carries? Yeah, very. Okay. And the Hey Gov website. <laughs> okay. So I know Rachel and Chelsea especially have really been struggling with polymorphic and some of 
the online processes and doing payments in the office. Um, <clears throat> it's not, in essence, so much of a challenge on the tax side for me, but they still do ask for a lot in putting new people in. So Chelsea had actually done a lot of the work and looking at HeyGov, we met with them about potentially switching for the credit card payments. Um, I think their system is going to be a bit easier to use in the office. It also comes with a card reader for payments, which we don't have now. So every time we put in a card, we're manually typing it in, which can bring up some errors in doing that. Not that we've had any, but it's just the potential for it. Um, it just seems to be a simpler system. They do have um, QR codes. So if you get a utility bill, you can in essence scan that QR code and it will pop it up. Um, I think it's going to offer pretty much the same things as polymorphic, just on an easier base on both sides for residents and us. Well, you said with the delinquent taxes, there's difficulty in, I don't say allocating a payment to which payment versus current payments. And so right now, if you go on the website to make a payment, you can pay your next quarter installment that's been uploaded from your original July tax bill, or you can pay the entire amount of your tax bill. So if you got a revised tax bill in August or September, you're not paying the correct amount, either paying more or paying less. You don't have the option. If you have late interest and penalty, it's not an easy way to go in and add that in. You can't just add an amount because you're, the link leads solely to 2023 taxes. So as the newbie, can you back up and tell me what you, what you are using? What would you use it for? What are you currently using the other system for? And what would this be used for? And then what's the difference in cost? So what we use Polymorphic for right now is any credit card payments. Okay, and you can pay anything by credit card? Birth certificates, dog licenses, okay. taxes, sewer and water bill, excess weight permits, okay. any of it you can pay through that. Um, they also created some fillable forms for us on the website. They don't work all the time. Sometimes they don't work well at all. And you have trouble getting like um, help from them, right? Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of the time it's difficult. There are concerns that we brought up in the process, how much information you have to put in. When you go into Polymorphic, they want name, address, phone number, email address. And we don't. You need... know what they do with that information? It's I'm kind Sorry. of in there. I mean, it's the whole data sharing thing at work. I'm just, it's, it's yeah. It just sits in there. Um, so they have integrated some of those forms onto the website, but they don't. Not you know, lively work. There, yeah. So with those forms, you can, in essence, request like a birth certificate or a dog license on there. And Sometimes we get alerted. Sometimes they don't. I know Chelsea said there are things that don't pop up when they're in there. Um, we were going to use it for um, different inter-office communications. So when we were starting the tax sale process, we could log phone calls, log the conversation. And the idea of that was that you could tag other people with it, which you can't do. So I would go in, start a case, put down what I said, 
and then end up sending Diane an email or going down and saying, hey, if this person calls, this is a conversation that we had because I could not add her to it. And I still can't add people to that case. So in essence, we're not using it in that way. I think polymorphic is a good concept, but it's just very clunky in its operation. And it's not ready for prime time yet. What's the annual cost of that anyway? I want to say it's like 43. I think that's what we paid the last time. I know because they haven't built us for a while. Okay. Yeah, but the or original setup was around sixteen or nineteen thousand. Hmm. And how long have we used it? Since two thousand. I mean, since twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. And, and I, I had them create a. You know, I've got the master, uh, actually Tom had it, the master email to send out agendas to, you know, we sent it out to about 90 people. And um, so I had Polymorphic make an email list for me using those addresses. And so Friday when I sent out the agendas to that list, I used that through Polymorphic as opposed to, you know, just doing it. And all of the Gmail addresses bounced back because it didn't appear to be coming from BerlinVT.gov. It came from some Amazon hmm. cloud thing, which was blacklisted and, and stuff. So, I mean, it's just. I don't want that. Right. We've had a lot of confusion with people paying taxes. So if they have the additional three digits in their parcel ID. So like a dash 100 on the tax bill, it says dot 100. So when people go in to put it in and polymorphic, you have to use a dash. So a lot of people will call um, polymorphic has gone down twice during tax payment weeks hmm. on tax payment day where <laughs> people have not been able to log in because they've been doing updates and it took a few conversations to get them to not do that because people are having problems. And it's not a problem of the wrong parcel ID. Um, for a while, there were parcel IDs that weren't in there. So you would, in essence, have to use somebody else's parcel ID when you could enter an amount last year. So when it would pop up, it, it would show the wrong parcel ID which confused people mm -hmm. because that's not their ID. Right. Um, so we just had one today where a transaction showed up that it was reconciled in there, but it was never reconciled. So it wasn't put in mm -hmm. because it showed up that it was and it wasn't. So which went through backdating that. So I think... In essence, PayGov can do the same things. We can do all the payments for everything. They come with a card reader. If we want to get an additional one, we can do that. Um, and they will file swap with NEMRIT. So we can just go back and forth instead of printing a report and manually entering it in. And is this geared toward, I am assuming, geared toward government entities? Do you know, have you talked to anybody? Municipal government. Yep. Have you talked to anybody else that uses it? Uh, Town of Castleton uses it. Um, they're pleased with it. I, I checked with them last week. Mm -hmm. um, Looking on the on the back page, you know some of their examples. Um, you know, utility bill payments, uh, property tax payments, um, donations. Uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about at our next meeting is uh, a uh, request from the rec committee on um, a new youth sports. 
Um, I don't want to say forum, but um, um, taking, I don't want to say taking that from the schools, but um, managing that for the schools and having an online donation system, which Hago would be able to do, um, dog licensing, liquor licensing, special event permits, um, utility service requests, um, reservations for, for like the town hall, sports fields. Uh, and the big thing is the bottom one there, the 311, uh, which is where um, residents can, can go in and put in, uh, you know, requests for all the potholes and, and stuff like that. And, and all the Mac could get routed to Tim and, and, think, and they can check on the status of it and get reported back when, when things are repaired. Um, so it's, it does a lot of things that I think the functionality we can take advantage of, uh, now and in the near future. Um, polymorphic when asked about the possibility of getting card readers, um, you know, they say, well, be at the end of the year at the earliest and probably be into next year, uh, which, you know, this day and age is, you know, just not, uh, realistic. Um, you know, that should have been one of the first things that they came up with. Especially now with how all the new debit cards are, they're not raised numbers anymore. They're just ink printed on and mm -hmm. they wear off. So then you can't read the number on the card. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, I see two two different packages. Is that correct? Is that, and, and I would, yes. And I would, I would recommend the, Package two. For the $5,000 plus the $2,000 one time set up. Now we do have money set aside from ARPA funds for polymorphic. Uh, so I would recommend taking it from there. Are there any cancellation fees regarding polymorphic? No. If we split. Not that I've seen no. <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> we'll pay by credit card. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is polymorphic this. So when people, a lot of times people will call and say that they're confused when they click on it because it takes, it ends up taking them to Stripe. So they don't necessarily know what it is. Where with HeyGov, they can just have an app on their phone that they go into and just do what they need to do with that. So are you saying that Stripe is actually the payment processor? So the HeyGov must use a payment processor too. They're not one, are they? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, you might want to find out who actually processes the payments. Only be, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, is any of the information in polymorphic, is that the is it stored there? Is there any issue with the public? Like, is I'm just thinking from a public records perspective, is anything stored in that system? And if it is, are we going to get? Are they going to allow us to somehow so get that information? Any payments that are stored in there are printed. Okay, so it doesn't store like any of the light any. There's no actual record stored in that system. Okay, good. We have we use systems at work where the rec it's actually the record of the transaction. So I just want to make sure that there's nothing about like that in mm -hmm. the polymorphic. So they put up they basically we printed out in a report and it says you know what it was, date, the amount, who paid it, and then we print that out. Okay, and that goes with what gets put in to the system to record it. Do you also use QuickBooks here? Because I see it integrates with, no? Nope. You do say all packages include an accounting integration too. And they specifically said NEMRIC. 
Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. President, you heard it, and I'm not. I'll be able to handle it. <laughs> that's awesome. Sounds good. It's Sounds unfortunate good. that we sunk those costs yeah. to the other one, <laughs> but I guess that's done. <clears throat> Okay, um, so um, a motion to switch. I make the motion to move forward with the switch from polymorphic to the HAGOV. And using, to, using ARPA funds. Using ARPA funds and to allow Tour Nelson to move forward with that process. Your second? I'll second that. <laughs> any other, any other uh, discussion on it? No, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Payne Turnpike North repairs update on temporary bridge. So there is um, spending emails in your packet. Uh, Tim's checked with uh, the state. Uh, Joel Perigo with the Municipal Assistance Bureau and Sven Scribner, uh, the bridge, not sure what his actual title, bridge uh, maintenance engineer. And at the bottom of the first page, uh, continuing to the second page is the uh, specifications looking at a two-way temporary bridge, 90 feet in length. Uh, the rental price, which would be $278 per month, which is doable. However, the cost to install uh, would be roughly $325,000. And then to remove it would be another fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. So, uh, in all total, we're looking at close to four hundred thousand uh, dollars for this project. And um, was it Joel or Spence said it would not be reimbursed? No, reimbursable. We're not eligible for reimbursement. It was all out of pocket. I appreciate them coming out. My first inclination based on everything is it's cost prohibitive right. um, as much as I'd like to see it happen. It drives me nuts because I live right there and I say no. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a lot of money mm -hmm. to spend on a temporary bridge. The day of the pre-town <laughs> meeting, residents had come forward to me with the idea. And oh, yeah. I was really for it. Yeah. I just had no idea it would be at this cost. Unfortunately, I don't think that's a good use of the town's money. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all the time and effort and yeah. having them come. Along with who helping and volunteering for a week, but you guys are coming together. So good for you. Those guys are very helpful and appreciative. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see why the three of you would work well as a team. Well, I know that. Right you know. I've known I know both of them, but Me too. from being there, and, um, Sven went out on Friday midday, mm -hmm. measured it, looked at it, and did a site visit. So yeah, they're both extremely knowledgeable, and it's great that the three of you could do that together. Yeah, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. it seems doesn't seem to be cost benefit doesn't seem to be there for me. Motion. Do we have to have a motion? I don't, motion know if we, I don't think we do. I don't think we do to act on it. As long as we don't yeah. act on it. Yeah. Any Shows other faith on our part. Any other discussion on this item? If not, um, town treasurer to assume fire department bookkeeping. So I mentioned um, at the last meeting uh, that we've been in discussions with the fire department about taking over their bookkeeping uh, for the department. Um, 
that we didn't feel would be a you know huge lift for the treasury department uh with the uh you know limited amount of work it would create um so we did uh, submit a uh, proposal over to the fire department that they discussed last week and they came back with some you know additional questions which most of them were answerable um but one they you know first of all that they brought up was you know would these records be subject to the public records act and there's never an easy answer for that but more than likely, yes, they would be, mm -hmm. or probably should operate under the assumption that they, they would be. Uh, but then the attorney for the league, uh, there's this document in your uh, packet on the back at the very bottom, uh, you know, raised a concern that we do not actually have the authority in our charter uh, to do this. Um, and, you know, getting back to being a... Um, Dillon State and Ryan, I sent you this by email. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it either uh, yet today or not. Uh, Ryan Byer, the president of the fire department, is also online. Um, that you know, without the specific uh, grant in our charter or through state statutes, we're not authorized to do that. And being a Dillon uh, rural state. Um, basically means the only authorities we have comes to us from the state legislature, either through, you know, the, the comprehensive state statutes or specifically given to us through the town charter, uh, neither of which um, applies for, for in this case. So, um, you know, the, you know, they are recommending against this. Mm -hmm. Um, I have also sent an email to our uh, insurance just to see what their thoughts. I've not heard back, um, but it sounds like it would not be any claims would not be covered under our, our, our current insurance policy. Um, so in order to give some direction to the fire department, I'd recommend uh, that we pass on this uh, at this time and, um, you know, give them the option to make any other arrangements they need to at this point. Uh, anything you want to add, Ryan, or I know it's not the direction we want to go in, but um, you know, without the legal authority, I think it's what we should. Ryan, you're muted if you're. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I, I agree with you. Um, I think there's some some tape there that probably came across. I concur. Given this additional information, uh, it behooves us to not go this route at this time. And like you said, tour. Although we would like to, if it were different uh, scenario. So understandable. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on this? Uh, just on a side note, um, the kind of related, the fire department merger study committee uh, would like to come and meet with us and we've got them tentatively penciled in for our April 15th meeting, okay. so. Okay, anything else? No. Okay, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24-21 for payroll from March 10th to March 23rd, 2024, to be paid on March 27th, 2024 in the amount of $66,676.40 and payable warrant 24G22 with check number 23819 to 23873 in the amount of $285,352.07, and the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department Selectman's orders from February of this year. No second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, 
approval of minutes. Okay, we got uh, March 18th, 2024 in your packet. I make the motion to approve the Monday, March 18th, 2024 minutes as presented. No second. Check you out a little bit here. I'm leaving that to Joe because I'm abstaining. <laughs> I'm leaving it to yeah. Joe since I called second. It. Huh. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Any abstentions? Yes. <laughs> Just because I haven't read them. I'm sure they're fine. Um, Being honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, motion. I'm here, so I at least wanted to read what I should have read. Motion carries. Um. A correction to the 919.22 minutes. So this is the uh, set of nuts from hell, I think. Um, like that bad penny just won't go away. Um, the big concern was the approval of the police department uh, union contract. And Flo was going to check her notes to see if she found didn't anything. Have, so did not come up it. with anything. No. No. Um, looking for ideas anybody has. Well, I guess we could just put in there generically it was moved and seconded. Can we just not bring it back to the back to the board to review and approve? I mean, not the minutes, of course, because we don't have it. I Is that not have option? to check on that. I mean, without getting they, creative, all right. we just bring it back. Well, the other thing is um, that the as and we've discussed this previously that the contract is going to be up next year and uh, the board is looking at a, and the union is looking at a one-year extension to that um, and we are meeting Friday it looks to be to start discussing that uh, process so maybe I'll bring it up then I don't know, Flo, if, are you going to be available that day? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, so. I'll copy I'm you. I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty certain. I'll be about 3.30. Mm -hmm. I'll copy you in on that. So we'll have some more. We'll have an idea on that then next week or next meeting. Uh, but then there were a couple other, um, at least three other, four, three other mm -hmm. items that need to be corrected. Wait a minute. Right, that was the biggest. Watch the meeting. It cut off ah. before that. We had a, Unfortunately, we had, a, we had an executive exactly. session to discuss the budget, the the contract, contract. and we sent the uh, uh, home because we didn't know how long the meeting was going to run. Then we exited and accepted. Gotcha. However, we had to sign off on it on the yeah, acceptance. of course. So you know, you voted on it. Right? Yeah. Just we don't have it in the minutes. Well, and it seems as though this is clearly indicating that. No, I tried. I oh, you did. Oh, I thought somebody else did that. And I assume these were, was this Vince's minutes? I don't know as long I'm just my curious time. because I'm just wondering, uh, we can't ask him because he's not. I mean, is it possible that Vince would have notes? Has I've he looked, been approached? Okay. I've looked at it and seen it. Well, you, you wouldn't have signed it if you didn't vote on it. So there's no right. question. Right. Yeah. 
It's just it was it's, it's not in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. And really the only issue is the um the Beamers Group yeah. C wants to see in the minutes where it was approved to, to process the Group C uh, conversions. It's too bad they wouldn't accept just the uh, the signed Sign copy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you rather have it in the minutes, or would you rather have a copy right. of the right. same of the of the signed copy? You know, the. Do they have that? Can you try that? Or they said, did they? They, said they wanted the minutes, yeah. Hmm. So I guess no action on the 19th. Um, okay. Um, any executive sessions? Yes. We've okay. got a round table first. So. Okay. A round table for Nothing this evening. Thank you, Joe. Joe? Um, yeah, so the first can got uh, oh, the church up here, Congregational Church. There you go. They're doing an eclipse lunchbox. I don't know if you saw that. I saw it when I drove so by now. If so you're going to be um, taking in the sights of the eclipse, you can stop up there and pick up a lunchbox at 11, between 1130 and 1. Um, the fire department had to reschedule their pie breakfast. So it'll be the sixth of this. I was going to show up last Saturday. Saturday right? <laughs> I looked on Facebook Saturday. and I said, oh, it's not till next week. <laughs> yeah, 930, 9.30 to 12. Um, and I just want to put a, put a thanks out to all the mutual aid departments that came to a structure fire in Berlin, which was up on Hill Street Extension. Um, first on scene were the first two, um, I'm going to say, paid departments, Montpelier and Barry. I would also like to say thank you to those fire departments. <laughs> I will do that in another way too, but yes. Does the traffic lights by the hospital, the 62 airport Fisher Road, not have signal preemption? They do. Okay, because apparently it didn't work. Um, I saw Barry City unit go through their And they didn't get the lights and sirens, and it did not give them um, 62 and Fisher. Yeah. They were. They For, well, they were coming, they were coming across on, on Airport Road, Fisher Road, okay. that direction. I would like to think they would work. Hmm. I can tell you they work when we leave from going down 62. Going though. down 62. Never had to use them coming back. We'll do, we'll check on that. Thank you. Okay, anything to her? Uh, a couple things um, in your packet. Well, first of all, uh, we've received quite a bit of funding um, from the senators, uh, both uh, Senator uh, Sanders and Senator Welch um, in the recently passed um, Minibus Appropriations Bill. Um, thanks to Senator Sanders, we've uh, received $1.6 million for uh, pedestrian infrastructure in the new town center uh, development. And thanks to Senator Welch, we've received $865,000 uh, in funding for the main pump station on uh, Route 302. Um, so I've drafted a press release, uh, it's in your packet, um, acknowledging this fact. So you wanted to take a, I uh, thought I saw somebody outside, but maybe I'm just seeing things. Um, take a look at any thoughts and let me know. I've also sent it to the Senator, both senators' offices. Uh, to take a look at this as well. So this is exciting. It is very uh, exciting. To receive both of these projects. Um, 
And uh, you know, we want to get the word out on that. Yeah, maybe if they put a quote in, that would be nice. Okay. It might be nice if they added a quote. Uh, either the senators? Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, next item is um, this Thursday, the 4th. Um, the town hall and the fire station will be uh, receiving a energy audit. Uh, take them and get the... Uh, energy efficiency of both buildings and stuff. Uh, it's going to be a, almost an all-day process uh, taking both buildings. So look forward to receiving some uh, recommendations from there. Uh, then lastly, um, there's a set of plans here for the Development Review Board uh, for two parcels at the mall. Uh, one is outlawed. D and the other is out lot F. Um, F is going to be a restaurant um, and out lot D is going to be retail space. So I don't remember the exact date of that hearing, but um, they're here. If you want to look at that, uh, I know there's a lot of them coming up. I can't keep them straight. Because tomorrow night is not on the agenda. So it might be the 11th. May is the 11th. And we do it, and uh, we do like to have the fire department comments for them as well. Okay. That's all I have. Carla? Oh, I want to ditto Joe on the fire fire department. That was my mother's house. So I greatly appreciate uh, all the efforts that went into they did their best to save the main house and it's still standing, but it may have to be torn down, but it's still standing. Um, uh, the only thing I wanted to say was I would really, I really think that we should, and I've been talking about this for a long time, um, have more uh, conversations with some of the other committees. And I've encouraged that there potentially be at least one meeting a year where all the committees get together, whether it be a, a dinner, something at the Grange or something where we invite everybody, all the members of the, you know, the volunteers and members of the committees to get together mm -hmm. um, and do some sort of you know, program. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, um, I think we should seek to get either the, you know, I know Tom, do, you know, serves three committees, reports maybe quarterly. I just feel like there's a disconnect between what happens in the committees and what happens at the select board until something, you know, sort of rises to the top. And I think it's good for all the committees to know what's happening and to work together. And, the you know, in my last I don't know, year on the planning commission, we collaborated with the rec committee they come we'd have a joint meeting and it was really informative to me to, to find out all the things that they were doing so i think that we should maybe look into to doing something like that and i plan to serve as a liaison to the planning commission um i think that's a valuable like if i don't know if other people want to do that for a committee but um i plan to do it for the planning commission and of course Tor and i are both on the drb so that's easy which but, i'm not oh you're not no oh you're an alternate no, no. oh you're done i'm done Oh, great. I'll teach you, I'll teach you how that's done. But... <laughs> so anyway, um, just that's my two cents. But, and... uh, we do need two alternates on the DRP. So I'm just throwing that out there. So that's my comment. So I'll talk to maybe two or a little bit. Maybe we can formalize a plan. Okay. Um... And we have executive session. Uh, we do. I move to enter into executive session for personnel under one VSA three one three eight three. Yeah, second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're now in regular session. Uh, so no action was taken in executive session, and I move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.